a comedy doesn't need to be about the number of jokes um, in an episode. It really can be about the character and the heart and where do you find humor in, in real grounded experiences. I guess the the first thing I wanted to ask you is just like very basic, sort of the beginning. Like, at what point did you come onto this project or, or hear about it, and what what made you want to be a part of it? Mark Critch, who's the the creator alongside Tim McAuliffe. Mark Mark is a very well known comedic voice in Canada, probably one of the top comedic voices. He's he's uh, a household name in in from coast to coast. And uh, it's because he's been part of uh, Canada's sort of top political satire television series. It's called This Hour's 22 Minutes for the past 20 years. And so he's somebody that, uh, you know, has has an important story, has profile. He's very well respected. Uh, and after, you know, a couple of years ago, he decided to write uh, a memoir about growing up in Newfoundland and Labrador. And New Newfoundland and Labrador is a province in, in Canada. And Newfoundland is an island that sits in, it's a remote island in the North Atlantic. Um, so remote, and it's it just has its own culture and its own food and, and um, way of life. Uh, and it just so happens that my, my mom is from Newfoundland and my parents met in St. John's, and I spent a lot of time there growing up. Um, but Mark, Mark wrote this memoir, uh, um, Son of a Critch, that was published, became a bestseller. And he connected with a friend of his, a guy by the name of Tim McAuliffe. And, and Tim is a Canadian screenwriter based out of LA who's written uh, shows like The Office and MacGruber and Last Man on Earth. And they they actually met on This Hour's 22 Minutes. And they started talking. I was like, is there a series here? Isn't there like, let's, you know, let's sort of test it out. So anyway, we, I, uh, Mark got in touch with me. This was in 2019 and said, you know, we have this idea we'd like to pitch to you. Uh, you know, it's kind of out of left field. It takes place in Newfoundland. Uh, we met at the Just for Last Film, or Just for Last Comedy Festival in Montreal. And that's when we we started pitching it. And we pitched it to, um, a couple of uh, potential buyers and immediately CBC was like, this is something we need to do in, in the room. They're like, there is so much here that we love the team assembled. Uh, the, the voice is, is there. And we just kind of, that was the beginning. So it was, you know, from a, from a pure producing point of view, it made a lot of sense. It checked a lot of the, the boxes you look for in terms of, uh, who, who the talent is attached uh, and then again, from a personal side, it, it was just these were stories that I was familiar with and wanted to to be a part of. I will out myself as someone who did not really know about Mark Rich before I found, you know, was going to talk to you, basically. Uh, and something I love about the show so much is that as much as I love learning about his life and who he is, it's so easy to relate to. Like, I'm thinking of my family stories and everything as I'm watching it. So how... When you all were were determining the tone, how did you land on making something that was at once very specific and also just very relatable and and universally kind of accessible? Yeah, you really nailed it on that, and that's kind of the um, sort of the paradox of this, where it, it, a show like this couldn't be more specific. It not only does it take place in, like I said, a remote island in the North Atlantic, it, it takes place. It's a period piece. It takes place in the mid eighties. So it's, it's like, you know, um, specificity on top of specificity. So you're just layering it down and, and then, but what you learn, and this is definitely built into kind of the DNA of the show is families are families and, you know, adolescence is adolescence and awkwardness is awkwardness and this sort of thing. And that's really you know, that we thought that's what was being built when, when, you know, the writing was happening and when the filming was happening, but you don't really know that until you release it to, to the world. And instantly in Canada, that's the feedback we got from coast to coast. People were like, I remember, you know, my Walkman, I remember, you know, what it felt like to get bullied and I, or to ride that school bus. And, and, from that, that the very, the broad, very like the it being so specific on a broad level, 
the the universal themes really came out and and not only that it became a show that we were hearing that that families were coming together to watch together um it's a multi-generational story and it's really <clears throat> balanced uh in a very almost equal way where you you really get to know all the all the family members and the characters and um yeah it's just been really nice to know that something and and seeing the response in in the u.s to this when like i said it's just so specific that that people are connecting with it and the feedback we're getting is very similar to the feedback we got from from canadian audiences we just didn't know if that was the case we we kind of had our fingers crossed and we're holding our breath and um yeah the response has been been incredible and just to to, to your point that those you know what what people are relating to it is a very relatable show even though kind of on its surface it probably doesn't look that way you also did Shit's creek which obviously became this phenomenon like mega mega show and i'm i'm curious was there anything about your experience on that either in putting that together or just kind of managing our expectations that was valuable as you were working on this you never know when you're developing a show or or releasing a show how the audience is going to react but you do you do learn from each experience and <clears throat> and i think you know one thing that mark and tim saw with with shit's creek and shows like it is audiences invest in characters and audience that's that and how do you how do you position a show so that audiences are open to to really connecting and really um, um, investing in characters. And they, they've done such an incredible job of that. And I think also, you know, that this show is about family and that show is about family. And it's about how, you know, how families navigate things together. And those are, you know, and they're, they're kind of on the surface. They're both very simple shows in that sense where, where you're kind of peeling back a lot of the the complications of life and really finding out what's what's important to people and what what people connect with and um that those were lessons that i think you know were learned from from Shit's Creek and from other shows like that that work it's like it does a comedy doesn't need to be about the number of jokes um in an episode it really can be about the character and the heart and where do you find humor in in real grounded experiences and that's really how both of those shows kind of found their their footing and found their voice well this isn't your first time doing a semi-autobiographical show right i think you did jan about jen arden as yeah. well uh yeah. so what is it do you have to take any extra steps when you know the villain's the villains in this series are the the high school bullies who like exist in the real world. Like, do you have to talk to people? Like, how do you, how do you get all this to screen without making anyone angry? <laughs> Mark was smart about that. And so I think when he would tell you this, that the, the bullies, it's not one specific bully. He's kind of like created this, this bully uh, Frankenstein that uh, of, of various experiences he had. So, cause that was something, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to upset anybody or, or, or that in telling his story. So there was sort of a, uh, an amalgam of various, uh, various people. Um, yeah. So, but, and you do have to be sensitive to when you're talking about somebody's life. And I, I and, you know, Mark, you know, it's it was very so I know it was, it's been surreal for Mark where, you know, he walks onto a soundstage and there's his house, his childhood house. And those are that's the phone and the radio that were in his family's living room and various things like that. And so I, I've found, you know, it's it's a conversation to have where you want to check in, make sure that that the stories are being honored um, in the right way that it's not being pushed by, by whatever creative forces to a place that isn't authentic. Um, 
And that's been very important. I think that's sort of been one of the reasons for the success of the show too, is because we haven't, um, you know, verged away from, from the authenticity of, of Mark's life and the story. There are obviously some liberties that are taken, but at the same time, it's like, you know, uh, this is a show about him and his family and growing up and he and his his parents are no longer with us his grandparents are no longer with us so there is there's some honor honoring that needs that that goes along, along with that and there is a sense of legacy and the importance of that as well was he always going to play his dad or was that like was that something that he wanted to do from the beginning or i imagine that and it just would be such an interesting no, no. I don't even remember if it was him who pitched the idea. I don't think it was. I think it was another producer that that pitched Mark. He's like, have you ever thought about being your dad? And I think Mark was like, I thought about it, but it didn't seem right. And and then uh we all started thinking about it and we talked to the CBC and they're like, Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's see what that looks like. And it it really pro- has proven to be the right uh, decision. Um, but I remember just Mark sort of saying the, the first time he went to wardrobe and hair and makeup and coming out and it's like, I'm my dad. Like, it's just, that's another one of those surreal moments. Cause you know, we have to age him up and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, but he's really found the voice and found the way to, to represent his dad and yeah i now in hindsight it's like what you know we did make that decision relatively quickly but what took us so long to even get there in the first place i mean yeah he's he's wonderful in it as well uh who was there a particular character that was the hardest to cast and and was it young mark <laughs> it was yeah it, it was young mark and the reason being which won't come as a surprise is you're really hanging the whole show on that character and that performance so you need to get it right and we ended up casting benjamin evan ainsworth out of the uk we we did a comprehensive search and a really detailed search for to cast that character out of canada and then we decided to to broaden the search and to look at the uk because there's a lot of um connectivity between newfoundland and that part of the world in terms of culture, in terms of accent, in terms of history. Um, so we're like, let's give that a shot. And we found Mark or we found Benjamin and it was hands down. There was nobody else to, to do, um, to, to take on that role. And thankfully we were able to, to make it work. And he's just been, not only does, is he the right look, but what a professional, like by, be, even before the first day of principal photography on season one, he had the whole season uh, uh, memorized off book. Like he he just was so dedicated and so determined. And he had just come off of uh, Robert Zemeckis' Pinocchio, where he played opposite Tom Hanks. So uh, we were like, is this kid ready to come to St. John's Newfoundland for, for a summer after having that sort of Hollywood experience? But uh, he loved it. He's been embraced by by the community and just as, you know, uh, we're very lucky to have them, but, but that was, that was the tough, that was a tough one. And then the other one, of course, being the grandfather pop, um, who again, is like, what, because we knew that relationship between young Mark and the, and pop was going to be so important. And we searched and searched and searched. And again, our, our UK casting directors were like, well, why don't we, you know, reach out to Malcolm McDowell. Let's see what he, he says. So he, we got a script. We, we were like, that is a long shot. That will never happen. Uh, the casting directors were able to get a script in front of him. He read it and instantly was like, how do, how do we make this work? How do I get involved in this? And so it was almost like him selling to us uh, for him to get involved, which was, which was pretty amazing. And, and a lot of people would say that that dynamic between uh, young Mark and Pop is really the heart of of the series. So we're yeah. so fortunate to have both of them. There's something to me that just feels so different from the shows that I watch that are made in in the U.S. and everything like that. And I'm curious, do you feel like there is something that makes like a like classic Canadian sitcom, or do you think there's like a certain 
different way that that you all approach yeah. these things? I think one of the differences is Canada never had a multicam, you know, system. That was never really the types of shows that we made. So it was all single cam. And the and there's very from a historical point of view, there's um and a convention comedy convention point of view there's a fundamental difference between the two um um multicam sitcoms are really about jokes per page like how many jokes can you get in into an episode and there's a there's there's a math to it like, there's mathematics we need x number of jokes per page and that sort of thing uh i think in canada that has never really been the the driving force behind comedies and it's really where where does the comedy come from? The comedy comes from character. The comedy comes from story. The comedy comes from from heart. And I think that's a big difference. And that's something that Canadians have have figured out. Um, and it's and it's been and it's worked. The other thing too is, and I was I've had a conversation with somebody recently, is that uh, I think you know the comedies that I've been involved in. You know, most of the characters are nice. There's a night and you're rooting, you're rooting for them and you're on their side where that's not always the case in, in American half hours where, you, you know, you kind of, you might get on board with somebody, but their moral compass might be a bit off and you're still kind of like, you know, I don't feel bad if they fail, but, but with, with Canadian shows, I think that that's sort of a bit different. There is a heart and a niceness and you're, you really want these characters to win. So I think that might be one of the differences.